Yo, what is going on guys? It's your boy Sisu here. Bring you guys to the Photoshop tutorial how to make your own thumbnails, your own custom, cool, sweet looking thumbnails. I don't know, this is more of a basic tutorial and not really like, you know, super advanced, something like, you know, a, a person who's been at Photoshop for more than like three months knows about. Uh, just me, basically me showing you guys my text, uh, you know, style, layer style, and also showing you the perspective tool in use as well, if you don't know what the uh, perspective tool is. It just basically gives you the option to like give it like, you know, let's say if like it was a building and it was like slanted in a way. So this like kind of like makes the perspective if you like take it and like move it closer to you on one side, you can kind of do that. I don't know, something just, I don't know if you totally just died, like fucking just, just lost what I just said. But anyways, like I said, it's more of a basic tutorial. So I'm going to show you how to zoom like this. And uh, this is, I'm not talking about the, the background or something. This is just like screenshot. Like I say, if you had gameplay or something, you just want to mainly focus on the text and you know the screenshot that you would choose for your gameplay if you're doing a, if you had gameplay related channel and you want to do something like that you can just have like a really cool spot where you had hit a cool clip or something like for like what phase Gwit did he had a nice cool uh, gameplay and he has his little quad feed right here and he's all ready to go and he just screenshotted this so people can get more attached and see like oh he hit a clip I want to go watch this now and this really cool freaking you know text right here is making me really want to click on it if you don't know like really thumbnails really do like freaking push you or push people to actually click on your videos as well I don't know if it does for you, but I'm pretty sure like a lot of, you know, it just gives it a really cool attention to your channel and gives it like a nice clean perspective to your channel as well. And just gives it all really a good first, you know, person, you know, what is it, preference or appearance, um, something like this. But if you're not into this, you can just do something like cool and professional like this, like I have on my channel. If you're a graphic designer yourself, or if you're just like um, some kind of like, I don't know, if you're really just looking for the professional look, this is a really cool way as well. Because if you have a, a, a logo that represents yourself, something like this as my S logo right here made by Muck Designs. Um, something like this, like I said. Um, you can just have like, you know, speed R, something right here. You know, tutorial, if it's a tutorial. Uh, you see how mine are, you can just have like a little cool outline for your, like a template as well. So you can keep on opening the same exact one and not doing it over and over again. So you can just put the banner or, you know, speed R banner, which you had in here. Or let's say if you didn't have a banner and you just wanted a cool professional theme, you just have the video title like somewhere right here. Uh, you know, uh, I have speed art here for example, but if you have like, you know, COD quad feet or something like that and you have the screenshot in the back like somewhere right here, I can do something like that. I don't know, whatever whatever looks better for you. But anyways, I'm also going to be showing you how to do the background of this, the starburst effect if you don't know how to do it yet. It's a very, you know, it's old effect, but you know, it's really still used a lot by people that don't really want to use screenshots for the tutorials. Or screenshots for their gameplay, you know, channel thumbnails. And, uh, yeah, so I'm going to show you how to do this really cool thing. There's more than one, like, you know, star effect you can do. You can just do freaking infinity, like, amount of, like, cool little designs for your background. And then having the cool text here in the middle. So, anyways, let's get started. It's probably going to be a longer tutorial. Like I said, it's, like, really basic. But if you're really, you know, not, you know, too keen about Photoshop and you just got it and you want to make thumbnails, this is the video for you. So, let's go. We're going to, like, you know, take a screenshot of our, you know, we just we just hit a quad feed. My name is Faze Gwit. And I'm like, yo, I can't wait to put this channel thing up. And I'm going to take the, the screenshot when I hit it so people can click on it and actually want to see me hit this clip. So here it is. And we're going to put a nice text on it. So let's get going right now. So the text font I use is called Factos, F-A-K-T-O-S. I'll put the download in the description below for you to go ahead and get it yourself. And what we're going to do, I was going to just type in like an example. I was going to put tutorial. Like, obviously, this is going to not be your, it's not the text you're going to be using. You're going to be putting like, you know, cool quad live commentary black ops 2 or something like that and right here press ok i'm just gonna put tutorial i'm gonna uh, press alt and shift to drag to duplicate it if you don't want to do that you can just simply go over here and press ctrl j to duplicate it as well and then take your movement tool and then drag it like so and like i'm going to do the same thing as i did, uh, did right here before where i have like by right here like slanted like that uh this gives it more of a typography feel if you don't want a typography it's just basically wordplay it's just basically having like, you know, same filled space like you would have it if it would just say like biases, it would like straight ahead, like straight, you know, not turned or whatever. And you can see how this is a more separated, just fills more space, kind of giving more of a little, uh, perspective of just like having a little cool theme to itself. Uh, so you see the word by right here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to like make, I'm going to turn it or whatever. Let's say if you want to turn it, you can press control T to use it free transform. Uh, free transform is simple. Just going to edit free transform as well. If you don't want to use control T and you just like turn it if you want, you can turn it sideways like that if you want. I'll keep it like that if you want, but you know, like I said, I have it like this before. It's like I don't know. It's called typography if you like play with it right, and you know, you want to learn about that a little bit more. You can do it like that, but like I said, I'll just put like I'll just make it like this, just because slanted it gives a little cool theme to it. I don't know, playful theme. I'm using Alt Drag to drag that like that. Um, actually, I'm gonna drag this one. So Alt Drag this right here. I have by, and then I'll put Sesso, like so. 
and then what I'm gonna do is see how it's like kind of like not filling the space I don't like that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press T on my keyboard bring up the text tool again I'm gonna click on the word I'm gonna highlight it all or press control a and if I press control T now I'll bring this little table up and it has like you know the, all these really cool things just basically some same thing up here but a little more uh, more of a uh, how do you say more of a you can do more things options if you see V A right here, this basically is the split between the letters of the word that you typed out. I'm gonna put that up a little bit more, and then I'm just gonna press or exit out, press OK with a little check button, and then you can see it kind of fills the space more and uh, just gives it a little more playful theme with the words. And so now here comes the you know part where I just pick my color scheme for my you know text. You can keep it black or white if you want, but that's kind of like plain. So you want to have like more vibrant colors to try and catch the people's eyes. All I'm gonna do is click on it, like I said, press Control A to select it all, and you see this little box right here. If you click on it, you can now select colors on your screen as well, or you can just select colors by itself. Like I say, if you just wanted white, you can just pick white. But what I'm going to do is just pick some color schemes on the thing itself or on the uh, somewhere along the, the screenshot itself. So I'm just going to take this color and put it up a little bit. Press OK. <gasps> Excuse me. Uh, Control A right here. And I'm going to click somewhere along here and just use this yellow or something. Kind of like make it a little more brighter. This is kind of dull. But it's probably going to be a little more brighter when we put a, a nice cool gradient overlay on it and stuff. And then I'm going to put this this red color right here. And that looks cool enough. Actually, let's put this blue. We'll make this blue. More vibrant though. A little more brighter. And I'm actually going to go fix this and kind of make this a little more brighter as well. Like so. There, that'll work. Press OK. And then you have your color scheme for your text, which means like basically the, you can have different colors. If you want, you can have one color. I just like to choose different colors to give a more playful theme. And what I'm going to do now is double click on the word tutorial or the word that you have, that you have, maybe you have COD gameplay or some commentary or whatever, whatever word you click on, make sure you do this now. Let's go to stroke path right here. It gives it like a cool stroke, an outline of it basically. If you put the size about 15 or 10, I don't really know. I'm going to say 10, um, just enough so it kind of gives a little nice bold effect. And what I'm going to do now is put a drop shadow on. If I go to my distance, change that to zero, change my spread to about 20, and then change my size to about 55. Gives it a nice little backdrop of a shadow in the background. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is put a gradient overlay on, blend mode, put it on overlay, put the overlay percentage down a little bit to about 40 or 30. 30 to 40 is, I don't know, really whatever you know preference you have. You can see, like, kind of gives it more of a, a monotone color from the top and a nice, cool, darker color on the bottom. Just have more of a pop color, I guess you can say. And you can put a pattern overlay on now. If you go put, put the blend mode on to uh, overlay and change the pattern type. This is the rated pattern pack right here, all this right here. And uh, this, these are not in here. These are some of the patterns I took myself. Uh, it's really, really simple to put your own uh, patterns on. I'll show you in a second. I'm gonna use this one though. It's really cool, nice texture. Put it on over, like I said. And then change this to about, you know, I don't know, 50%, just whatever looks good to you. But let's say if you wanted to make your, uh, your own, you know, uh, texture or a pattern, like I said, if you didn't know, by the way, I don't know, I, just, I didn't do this in a video. Oh my god, I didn't do this in the beginning of the video. If you go to File, New, this is the dimensions of the thumbnail itself. I'll put it in the description down below just in case. Uh, it's 180 by 720 pixels. Press OK. And let's just say you have this canvas up and you want like a really cool texture you want to use as a pattern. You would drag the texture in, like simple, let's just say like this, this logo is my texture and I just put it in just now. Alright, so this is a texture. This is a really cool, the most amazing texture I've seen in your life. And you want to use this texture as your uh, pattern. You just uncheck the you know box right here, so the only the texture is shown. Go to Edit, Trans or uh, Edit Define Pattern, and you just name the pattern. Press OK, and then when you go back to your pattern, you know you know your pattern uh your pattern effect, it will show. It'll be like on the bottom one. It'll be all the way in the bottom. Scroll all the way to the bottom, and you'll see the newest one will be there. And it's really really cool. It's a really cool thing if you didn't know how to do that. So that's that's something you probably didn't know. Maybe you did. I don't know. Anyways, what I'm going to do now is going to fill the exact same patterns or the exact same effects on the uh, other, you know, words now. Right click on this, copy layer style, right here, paste layer style, and paste layer style. So I'm going to just keep that. It can overlap if you want. If you don't want it to, just move it down slightly if you just want to put, move it down. But it just really mattered to me. I think it looks cool when it's overlapped like that. I don't really know. And uh, I'm just going to kind of like play with it a little bit more now. And just kind of like make it all kind of like compacted to get uh, together, and so now I'm done. I can actually finally you know mess around with the uh, perspective effect, but we cannot use any of the transform perspectives yet, only because this is not editable. Uh, this is still a text and still uneditable. So if you did not know how to make it uneditable, 
you select all the words that you used uh, that has all these effects on it. If you have one word, all you have to do is mess around with one word. Uh, you would just regular right click on it, on the word, right click, and rasterize layer style. What that will do is get rid of all the effects and make it so you can actually go to edit, transform, and perspective. Now you can click on it and just do it to all the rest of them. You can just either either shift click on all of them and press Control E, merge it all together. And that'll just you know allow you to you know move it all freely and still have the effects all gone, but it's still going to be there on the layer itself. And now the layer itself is now editable as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit, transform, perspective, and I'm going to simply just take this left side. You see these little left boxes. You have the top left box, top right box, top or bottom right box, and your bottom left box. If you take one of these and move it up, let's say if I took this, I moved it up. You can see how it just takes it, the perspective of it, and makes this side, the left side. Be looking like it's more toward you and the back side right here is more on the right and you can just take this and move it down and you can see this far get, this is farther away from you uh, so this is what I'm talking about perspective and you just move around with this and just plays it a little bit more and this makes it a cool looking little this little uh, kind of a, a perk I guess you can say to making your own text look a, a little bit more cooler and then you just simply press the check button right here press OK on your keyboard or enter and then you can have like something like this now so it looks really, really cool nice and clean, just, just really bold and nice, and it captures the eye. And I'm gonna do now to finalize it, what I'm gonna do is make a new layer. I'm gonna take this primary color and change it to white. I simply just click on it and change it to white, and press B on my keyboard for the shortcut for the brush, right here. And I'm gonna either press Control Alt, and just either move left or right to make the uh, brush bigger. That's the, uh, this, the shortcut for that. Or you can go right here, make the brush bigger, as simple as that. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna zoom out with Control minus minus, and I'm going to hit the brush one time above it. You can see how this little, it gets a little bit more lighter here. I'll probably do it again, like a little bit more closer. So there you go. Kind of gives a nice little light on the uh, top. You can keep it on normal. You can put it on overlay if you want. I just like to put it on uh, normal, leave it on normal. And put the opacity to about 65 or so. And then also go to filter now, noise, add noise, and put this on four. I do not know why, but I've been seeing this look so much better on like, you know, it just gets rid of the gradient lines. You know what gradient lines are. Let's just say, if you see gradient lines, you know what I mean. You can see like, you know, the uh, brush size gets like, you can see like little layers in between. Let's see how it fades out. You can get rid of that by using the filter uh, noise, add noise, and put it on like 3 to 5%. They'll get rid of that and make it look more cooler. So I just do that on default now just to get used to it for myself. And then you're basically done. You can see it looks all nice and cool and vibrant. And there goes that. So like I said, there you go. And now for the last part, I'm going to show you how to do these little background uh, starburst effects. Really, really simple to do. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your new layer or your new sheet and just have like a nice white or on it. It doesn't really matter. If you go to your gradient right here, uh, right here, see this little gradient thing or G on your keyboard for the shortcut, you can see your primary and your secondary are gonna be the first thing that pops up. So this is the first box is gonna be what's in the primary and secondary box. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick two nice, you know, vibrant colors. So I'm gonna put red and I'm gonna have just I don't know green. I guess is good enough. And if you just take this, start from the top right here, and just drag this little line. You can see this little white line or this little uh, really thin path line just kind of come together. Just hold it down. Click all the way here. You can see this like red to green gradient now. So what you do is if you go to Filter, and you go to Distort, and you go to Wave, and you can see over here in this side right here, this is where it's going to be like really cool to like mess around with. You take, uh, put your amplitude, uh, amplitude up. See the little lines coming together. And to make it straight, you just want to just play with this a little bit. And you can see how it just makes it a little more straight. If you don't want this, this is the same effect that you'll see in the beginning like I showed you here. If you don't want this, you want something different, mess around with it a little bit more. And you can just get something really, 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 really cool. Let's see if you had this. Press OK. And to get that, like, you know, that, like, I don't know, how would you say, uh, polarized effect, I think it's what it's called, or polar, polar effect, you would simply just go ahead, click on the layer again, go to Filter, Distort, and Polar. And then you just uh, make sure it's... Uh, Rectangle of the polar, not polar to rectangle. It just makes it look weird. If you want to put that, you can put that. But I like this better. Like I said, you can do many, many, many things. Press OK. And then it makes it all starbursty and like burst into like, you know, really cool, really cool way. So that's what you can do. So that's how I would do like things like this. But like I said, if you want to keep it straight and all the, the way I showed it before, you could. But anyways, then you would just do your, you know, text again, like how you did it before. And then you're all done. So that's hopefully you guys enjoy this tutorial. I know it's like really, really basic and almost like kind of, uh, you know, kind of like all over the place in a way and uh, i don't know i'm sorry but anyways thanks for so much for watching make sure you guys follow me at sesuachu on twitter thank you guys so much for watching like i said before thanks for leaving that like if you did already and comment down below for any other tutorials you want to see on my channel thank you guys so much for the fourth time and thank you guys so 
so much for 12 freaking K. <sighs> That's a lot of people. Thank you. I just can't, can't. I'll see you later. Peace out. Let's switch you up.